Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Um, you guys like my new hair? Uh, I don't know how I feel about it yet. It's brand new. It's actually already washing out. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to get into it. But you know, it's it's different. It's it's hair. Anyway, today is September thirtieth. Tomorrow is going to be the first day of October, and I thought it would be really fun to do something to kind of get ready for Halloween in a way, but something I've been wanting to do for a little while, which is talk to you guys a little bit about my face and body painting career and show you my face and body uh, painting kit. I thought this would be a great time to do that just because Halloween's right around the corner so I could talk a little bit about my favorite face paints and my favorite tools for face and body painting and show you my kit um, and see and tell you about the stuff that I use the most in my kit. I also wanted to, while I did this video showing you my kit, I wanted to talk a little bit about my journey over the years becoming a face painter. So um, I started face painting so long ago. I think, I wanna say, first time I ever really did it was when I was about 13, maybe even younger, like 12. A friend of mine uh, was a florist at a country club and their, the country club was having like a fall festival kind of harvest event. And they invited me along to, because I've always been artistic ever since I was a little kid. I've always been crafty and artistic and I've always like loved working with mixed mediums and stuff like that. Uh, they asked me to come along and face paint the kids. Um, so I just kind of did it for free. And when I, later on in high school, I was a kind of a weird kid in high school and I bought a bunch of face paints to put on my own face because um, back in 2004 and 2005 when I was 14, 15, they, there was no such thing as like a red eyeshadow. You couldn't, I wanted to do like really kind of gothy, punky makeup looks. So I wanted that hot pink eye, like eyeshadow on my eyes or I wanted red eyeshadow or I wanted to draw X's on my eyes, which is something I would do before school sometimes. <laughs> And I got yelled at once. I got yelled at and told to wash my face because um, it wasn't Halloween. But I'm an adult now and Halloween is every day. Anyway, I used face paints to paint on my own face. Um, and throughout high school, I always kind of, um, anytime there, because of the way I dressed and be, how I did my makeup, um, I, anytime there was like a face painting opportunity, I was always asked to do it. Like. I was asked to do the makeup for the mock accident like in hi in high school before prom they'd have a bunch of actors come in and stage an accident like a car accident so I did the makeup for that I had a project in school that like you know a bunch of kids would volunteer to come to the class dressed like a skull to help kids imagine what it would be like if that person suddenly died next time you saw them like next time you went to school but well, anyway, <laughs> long story short, I got asked to face paint skulls for that and I remember when I was face painting those skulls, a lot of people, there was a bunch of other kids doing the face painting, but a lot of people were picking me because I was doing particularly sick looking skulls, like pretty artsy, cool looking skulls, whereas some of the other kids were just kind of doing black eyes and some weird teeth. Um, but I'd get artistic with the teeth. I'd do little spiky teeth or I'd do little lines for the teeth or what have you. Also, when I was in high school, I worked at a art studio for children that taught art classes to kids. The owner of the studio, her name was Sheila. She, hi Sheila, she was a great mentor of mine. She really helped me through my teen years. The folks from around the community, like the high school and the junior high would contact Sheila uh, to see if she could gather a group of te like teenage face painters and they'd pay her face paint at their events and she'd invite me along and I, you know, that's where I kind of started doing face painting gigs in a real way like doing hundreds of kids face painting them and uh, we had our tip jars and that was the first time i really kind of made money do doing face painting and it was really cool because on just tips alone i was making like 20 dollars an hour and that's when it started to dawn on me that like hey this is this could be profitable like i could do face painting gigs here and there when I was 17, 18, I worked at Six Flags at Fright Fest and I ended up getting a job as a special effects makeup artist at 
Fright Fest and that was so fun and amazing. So at that point in my life, I started to really consider becoming a real life makeup artist, either special effects or face and body painting or um, makeup. I, at that point in my life, I'd never worn like makeup on my eyebrows before, so I wasn't really that into the beauty, beauty realm of things, just the freaky realm of things. Um, but yeah, that's when I began uh, working with more face paints, um, considering what what kind of products were best for different purposes. Yeah, then I, when I was 18, I began college. I went to art. I started going to art school, and while I was in college, I started thinking about what kind of jobs I could get in a real way. What what kind of jobs could I like, apply for now that lets me use my artistic abilities and get paid now? So I found uh, an agency online that, that hired out face painters and I was just like, you know what, I've done face painting gigs. I, like when, you know, either in high school, I actually, I forgot to even mention, I used to do makeup for plays for my drama club in high school. Too. I reached out to uh, this agency and I gave them a little bit of back background about me and sent them some pictures of my face painting and see if they would represent me and they did um, and I was actually really shocked because I was just like and then they asked me how much I'd like to get paid and that this was um, this was 2008 I think the minimum wage at the, that time was seven dollars an hour so I thought it would be really cool to get paid ten dollars an hour uh, <laughs> and the agency was just like oh uh, we need to pay you at least $60 an hour. And I was just like, <laughs> it like blew my mind that that's how, many, how much a face painter makes. Um, I make even more money than that now per hour uh, as a face painter. And I make way more gigs because of, you know, I have a clientele now, but back then that was just shocking to me. And uh, I, anytime that agency called me, which wasn't very often, like the beginning, it was just like too, to five gigs a year, like not a lot of gigs, but when they did come around, my broke college self was excited. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I'm gonna make a hundred dollars in two hours, it's gonna be great. Um, at that point in time when I first began doing gigs for an agency, it was pretty funny, actually. Uh, so, let me go ahead and start telling you about the first, like, kit that I had. When I first began doing gigs as a face painter when I was 18, working with an agency, my kit looked like this. It, I had a par cardboard box, much like this one, where I kept. Um, I still have this after all these years. All these years, I had this rainbow of Snazza root paints. This is all dried up now, I can't use it anymore, but... Ten years ago, uh, Sheila, who did the art classes, um, and we did, the, did those gigs together. She bought a variety of these rainbows from <laughs> Snazaru. She had like maybe five of them, so a bunch of us could go to gigs together and do lots and lots of face painting. Um, so I decided to go online, go on eBay, and buy one of these for myself. Um, and as you can see, I ended up using up all of the white and all the black early on, and all the yellow. The yellow would bite really fast. Oh, and the red. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this got all used up and for the first couple gigs that I did as a face painter, being all broke, that this is what I used. And to apply everything, I used these makeup cosmetic wedges. I think the first gig I ever did, I used brushes only. And then I u learned right later on that like these sponges work better. Wedges, and there's a couple survivors from back in those days in here. Um, I used to buy these cosmetic wedges to apply the face painting with and I as you can see there's a couple still here and I would keep them and I would reuse them I would uh, wash them of course and god are these hard to wash by hand they're not designed to be washed they're designed to be thrown away but I was broke and I needed to uh, have a kit so that's what I was using in my kit for a long time and then I would buy from Michaels those uh, five like ten packs of brushes for ten dollars from Michaels they were the white Taclon brushes um, but yeah I would buy a ten pack of those and I, and I learned after I did a couple of those gigs that I would have to buy a new set after like two or three gigs because they would lose their point and they wouldn't be able to be used anymore they were such 
poor quality brushes. At the time, I was just like, that's uh, that's that's life. <laughs> and um, I also had this little glitter applicator from uh, Hot Topic. See the little skull on there? And I, you would just brush on glitter. And I kept this around for a long time, but it's pretty much empty now. There's not any more glitter, but you would brush on glitter. And I thought that this was a cool thing, and I kept it even after I got a whole new kit and stuff. Uh, and then after I had been face painting for a long time, I saw some body painting that I, that was done by Mark Reed and I fell in love with Mark Reed's work. So I bought a some Mayron makeup paradise. This is a Mayron palette of the Paradise paints, the Paradise AQ. Um, and I think this is just the classic one. As you can see, I've pretty much used up all the black and all the red and most of the white. Those are the ones that go the first. Um, but I don't use this one a ton. And it's actually nice and moist still. I don't know if I can still use this. But I've had this for a good eight years. <laughs> I wanted to use the same stuff, same face paints Mark Reed did. And yeah, these are also... Learned very, very quickly after starting to use these that those Snazaru face paints were fine. At least they're hypoallergenic. At least they're cosmetic grade. You don't want to use craft paint or anything garbage or even anything from like China or like even the craft store. I, I wouldn't face paints that you can buy at Spirit Halloween <laughs> for your professional face painting kit. You want cosmetic grade, hypoallergenic, antimicrobial face paints. Mayron, Par Paradise by Mayron makes some. Snazaru is another one that they're probably the least uh, like expensive ones and the most commonly found. You can find Snazaru paints at um, Michael's, but I bought mine on eBay back when Amazon wasn't really a thing. Um, I then moved on to this and then I remember lots and lots of face painting wanting to do really more artistic stuff. You know, early on you're just doing Spider-Man and like butterflies. That's, you get to be really artistic. Um, but then I started seeing like a work by other artists and I'm just like, why are their lines so much better? Um, first of all, I noticed very early on when I was using the Snazaru kit that the black was garbage. <laughs> the black and the white were garbage. You can't, you couldn't make lines with the white and the black from Snazaru at all. And then when I moved on to Mayron, I quickly learned that the, the Mayron black is actually pretty good for line work, but um, the white was still like, like just sinking into the other colors. They it wouldn't be waxy and beautiful when you painted it on top. Now I loved the Mayron paints, so I ended up buying um, a 12 pan large kit, and I used that for a long time, and I kept it inside this box. I have it somewhere. It's probably at my mom's house. I don't have it in my no apartment, unfortunately, to show you, but. Uh, that's what I used for a long time, and I'd keep that in a cardboard box for, I think I used the cardboard box method for a good five years. And then when I graduated college and I needed to step up my working game, I decided to pursue face painting even more. So I bought a, I saw a beautiful um, photograph of one face painter's kit, and it was in a gun case. Uh, and it was like a beautiful customized gun gun case. So I bought a gun case of my own and I was gonna customize it, but I never got around to customizing it. So I would just carry around the gun case. I would put in my my palettes in there, my uh, folios of brushes in there. Um, at that point, I started buying like nicer brushes and it was a very inefficient system. It was just a bunch of stuff carried in a giant 40 pound case and um, it was not cute. I saw all these beautiful kits all over the internet and I eventually caved and bought a Craft & Go. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into vlog style. I'm gonna show you my Craft & Go. I don't use the Craft & Go quite as much anymore because I've since um, gone back to the gun case method and I've customized it and I'm looking at it right over here and it's so beautiful. But let me go ahead and show you my Craft & Go and I still use it sometimes but not quite as much. Okay guys, so I thought I'd show you kind of vlog style my craft and go. Um, and this is more or less what it's like, but as I mentioned 
just a second ago that I no longer use this Craft & Go um, quite as much, but a long time ago I used to have, as you can see, all my depotted paints right here. I would keep the fab paints, the little smaller ones, still inside their containers and just pop them in there because they fit in there so perfectly, but the rest of them I would depot. Um, and I would magnetize all my rainbows up here. Um, and my split cakes would be over here. I used to have way more, but I've moved a lot of them over to my other kit. Um, and I'd keep a mirror. I, I had, I used to keep my, um, water container here. I'd have a l l row of glitters. As you can see, I have my little container of disposables right there. And I would keep a couple little extras here. So I wouldn't pop my white. As you can see, my white and my black would be right there. And, um, oh, here's my black that I hadn't depotted. It's still pretty, it's pretty empty, but, um, and I could pop this out and underneath I would store a couple extra bits, like any paint, any backups of paints, some gems, some glue, my brush bath. Sanitize the hand sanitizer right there. Sometimes these uh, magnets would come off, and if they would, if I wouldn't be able to magnetize them up there, I would just stick them in there. And yeah, I would just keep l random little odds and ends there underneath my <laughs> my depotted paints. Something I'd like to mention about the depotted paints really quickly. Um, this is the Paradise by Mayron. Argent, the silver, do not depot this because it crumbles and when it gets into the other paints, it just is so invasive. It's so bad. So I don't recommend depotting that. And I don't recommend ruby red paints for depotting because they dry up um, and they take forever to go through. So I won't be buying any re ruby red paints anymore. See, this is a ruby red paint as well. So those are very fun for depotting, but um, some of my favorite colors in here, is the Krylon Dayglo. That's the best, like, hot pink. This is Chameleon Oscar, I believe. This is, it's a really beautiful, like, pale gold. Um, and here I do believe I have Paradise Yellow. That's one of my favorites, but I think I've got a bag of, back up of Fab Yellow. That one's a really good one, too. Um, this is a Chameleon neon or metallic blue that one's amazing too i love it this is a fab green that i love and this fab teal doesn't stain it's one of the only teals i think i've ever found that does not stain so that one's great too uh, i want to get a full size of this paint i think it's i haven't you know i've had this for a year i think I still haven't really, I've made a good dent in it, but I haven't used it up, but it is a beautiful deep red color that comes in handy for line work or even on the fly face paint versions of SFX. That's a nice blood color. So I like that for that. And yeah, a bunch of little odds and ends, a couple extras of my fab paints here. These are super beautiful colors. They're Ziva, but anyway, let me go ahead and move on and show you the, my, kit today that is so beautiful and perfect all right guys so here is my kit in the way that it looks today um this is the kit that i use now i think it's so beautiful and gorgeous and perfect i've got all these beautiful split cakes here and my rainbows and, a bun and these are even a stack of rainbows here too but let me go ahead and go through everything in like a organized fashion. So I actually got this kit. Uh, I did not create it myself. I actually bought it from a face painter that was retiring. She sold it to me for $800. Um, so that included the, the case um, and the setup here and the way uh, all the foam was molded here and a lot and pretty much all the split cakes. Um, I, sp I switched out a few of them for my own. Um, she actually had a bunch of weird split cakes in here. Like some of these that came with hers, I really don't understand how she uses them because they don't have like like a dark edge or in a light edge like a lot of them would be like I think I got rid of all the ones that kind of really confused me but I guess this is a good example of one it's just like it does like what would you use that for I don't know <laughs> um but 
yeah, I have, I have all my splits here. Um, and then like I have a white and a black cake and a red uh, as I went over in earlier on. Um, those are the ones that are hardest to use. Oh, here we go. Here's some of the weird ones that I neglected to mention. Um, like, how would you, how would you use that? It's like silver on the end. It's got a brown right in the middle. How would you use this cake? I don't know. Leave your comments down below. <laughs> Leave your, the comments down below on how to use that cake because I have no idea. I keep my water in this little container. It's a little dirty. Please excuse my brushes and my container because those are pretty dirty. I did clean this pretty well, the paints pretty well, just to show you guys. I wanted to go ahead and get this up as soon as possible before Halloween. These, this black and white, and they're good enough. These are from Global, but I've never pursued Global myself. My favorite black and white, my favorite white is from Chameleon. So I'll be re like, replenishing this guy with this guy when it's, it comes time. And my favorite white for bases is uh, the Krylon, which I keep right here. Um, and I also have in here a couple star blends. So I, I will use the star blends black to black out eyes for like a skull or a zombie. And then I keep a red just for Spider-Man. Um, if it's hot, if it's Cold out, I'll use the red, this red for Spider-Man, but if it's hot out, I'll use the powder one that tends to not be so melty. And my favorite black is the Krivlin. A lot of people go nuts about the wolf black, but I prefer the Krivlin black. It's just not as goopy for me. Then I keep all my glitters right here. Um, I have a handful of the chunky glitters. I have this peacock one, this rose gold one. I don't know if you can tell if that that's rose gold. Um, I've got the unicorn one here, uh, the rainbow UV reactive one, and a red one. Well, the red one I don't use as much. I have a couple more that I haven't like mixed up yet, but those are the ones I use the most. And then down here are, are a bunch of my glitters. And then I have the first row are all pixie paints in these colors. And these are just um, glitters in every color. I don't use these as much. I the this is the way the glitters came. The woman that sold it, the kit to me, is the way she put it together. Um, but there's a few I actually use sometimes. Like I'll use the red sometimes, just like dipping into them. And I'll use the, the yellow orange for like noses. That's really cute. But I prefer to use these Mama Clown glitters. Um, just cause, just faster to use. So I have them in a bunch of colors. I've got the, the yellow one. The green one is actually super gorgeous. I love that one. Um, the sea blue is great for, ex I think, exclusively sea-themed designs. So I don't use this blue as much. It's a little bit chunky, too. Um, this one's a little bit more finely milled. This ice blue, that one's beautiful for any kind of icy designs, like, like frozen and such on um, the magic magenta is pretty handy too for any kind of like pink princess design that one's pretty but um i think the fruit punch one is a little bit more versatile this one's got more of a yellow shift and that one looks beautiful on rainbows um and then of course iridescent i had only iridescent for a long time i only used the iridescent and this lasts forever i think this is the first one i still have and as you can see it's still more Still a good amount left in there. Red is, you know, exclusively for red designs and, you know, anything Christmassy and on the lips. Like, it's cute on the lips, too. Um, purple, not so commonly used, and black, not so commonly used. Mama Clown glitters are great because they're easy to apply uh, and... They're super finely milled, and they're cosmetic grade, so if you get them into the eyes, it will not damage your corneas. And I also have a couple, a handful of these glitter marks. These are really fun for eye designs. So I have this purple one. I had a gold one, but it was super runny and like completely un unable to use, I guess. Well, another face painter told me that it did that because it had gone bad, but I bought it that way, so that's pretty lame. Anyway, I, rep I replaced it with this one, the liquid bling. One of my colleagues was using this one and 
it was beautiful so I got one of those and it's beautiful and it works for me now and then I have this glitter mark and iridescent and then I have oh no this is the iridescent one and that are they both iridescent them silver one of them's iridescent <laughs> um, so that's what's in there and over here I have a pretty big stack of rainbow cakes from silly, silly farm these are all rainbow cakes Maybe I'll go ahead and cut you off and spread them out so I can show you which ones I have. I have a whole bunch. But when I work, I just pull out the one that I need and just put them all back. But let me go ahead and cut this off right here and I will come back and show you them all spread out. For all the Silly Farm Rainbow Cakes I have spread out over here, I have, um, I forget what this one's called. That's Candy Heart. I don't use that one as much. Um, I'm beginning to use it more just in place of this one, which is almost used up. This is the second one of these I, I've bought, and this one's almost all gone. This is the Barbie Rainbow Cake. That one's super common. This is the Cameron Garrett Baby Doll Rainbow Cake. I have a back of, of this. This is a beautiful one and super fun. This one's Hippie Girl. I haven't used that one a ton. I have to use it more. This is the second one of these I have. This is the, um, I think... Tropical Paradise one. This one's so beautiful. I have a friend that um, took out the blue, the dark blue, and put a light purple in its place, and that one is really beautiful, and I and I think I might want to try to do that, but I like this one as is as well. Um, the colors are so bright and so cool. Um, I haven't used this one a ton, but this is a, like one of the Cameron Garrett Halloween ones. I want to use it more, but I just need to come up with some cool Halloween -y designs and it's almost October So I'm gonna be using you my friend. And this is the Mardi Gras one This one actually doesn't get used unless I'm doing something Mardi Gras Like a New Orleans themed which has happened, but I haven't used it a ton um, I've had that one for a little while. This is I think the second or third one of these ones I have. That's the snowflake one. That one's super popular. This one I haven't used a ton. This one's um, the pearl piece. I use it but I don't, I kind of use it in place of others more often than be like wanting to pick that one up on its own. Um, this is the mermaid pixie cake. Um, I think this was was created by, I can't believe I can't remember her name. But I bought a bunch of hers because she was amazing. I used I love her work. What's her name? Jenny Saunders. Jenny Saunders created these. Um, but yeah, she created this soft rainbow. I've had, I've gone to through maybe four of these. This is a, a I think an essential one. This one's an essential one for mermaids, which have been really popular this year. Um, as you can see, I've got. This one's all pretty much pretty much used up. I could probably throw this away. And I've got a backup here. This one's the Moon Glow, I think it's called. Moonlight. Um, so that's a Moonlight. Um, this is a new rainbow created by Cameron Garrett. This one's gorgeous too. Just a stunning summertime rainbow. And this one's called Summer Sorbet. I need to use this one more. This one's really pretty, but I haven't used it as fast as I'd like to. This one's called... Sunset Pixie, um, and this one I use for tigers. This one's really beautiful, and then that one's called Tango. Um, I do prefer the Krivlin one for for the tigers, though. Um, I have it as a backup. When I use that one up, I'll use that. Um, when I'll use this one up, I'll use that one. Um, so those are the rainbow cakes that I have on top of all these rainbow cakes that I have. On top of these rainbow cakes that I still need to insert into the other kit. Um, instead of the Sunset Pixie, I prefer to use, actually I haven't used this one a ton either. This is a tag one, it's got a Krivlin top, but it's, it's from Tag. And this is the, the Krivlin one from Tigers, that I, for Tigers that I love. That one's awesome too. And I think when it comes to rainbow cakes, I think Krivlin makes my favorite rainbow cakes. Um, for neon rainbows, this one's the best. I've tried the tag ones, I've tried the diamond effects one, I've tried um, the silly farm one, um, but I think the Krivlin one is the best. I love this one. That is rainbow cakes. <laughs> I love this mirror that came with it. I don't know what this mirror is, but it's just perfect and it's so big and like 
If all those splits are not enough, I also have all these global palettes. I don't always take these with me, but I did take just this one with me on the cruise. This is this one's got a bunch of really essential um, splits. Like this one's the global Iceland is essential for frozen designs. It's the best like blue. This snake one is perfect. Um, it's the best for snakes. Uh, this fire one is the best for fire. This. Uh, I think this one's called Unicorn. That one's essential, and this one's, as you can see, that that one's getting pretty down there. That one's great for roses. I think that's called Stargazer. Um, and I want to play with this one. This one's a little bit newer one, but I want to play with this more. Um, I'm pretty down on the Leanne's Rainbow. That one's pretty essential. I had a Leanne's, like, full size. I didn't like it. It wasn't as bright as the tag one. The tag one was way brighter, but this one's really bright too. And the, the, the mini one in the palette. What's I think important about a good Leanne's Rainbow Split Cake is that the yellow needs to be pretty wide. Um, if it's too skinny, it's gonna get overpowered by the other colors. So um, the yellow needs to be nice and wide. And this one is, I just need to clean it. I'm gonna play with these a little bit more, especially this one. Um, and this one, I don't know, this one kind of has some less exciting ones. I don't really know what to use them for. I, I should use them more just because it would be more of a challenge, and getting challenged as an artist is really important. Especially, I, sh I would know because lately I've been getting burnt out because I've been doing too much of the same shit too, mo too often. And then I also have a pack of wipes. I, this is a CVS pack, I always buy the unscented, just because fragrances can irritate skin sometimes. Um, but I primarily use these to clean just my hands anyway. And I actually buy like the Huggies Naturals wipes in bulk, and I just refill these guys. I like the soft packs, because they I can just squish them into the kit wherever they fit. Um, and I think last but not least, let's talk about brushes. So I keep them in in these folios when I'm doing a gig. Please excuse how dirty they are, but let me go ahead and just talk to you a little bit about my favorites. Um, this Mark Reed body painting one is essential. Now should I go back to the backdrop and talk about these one by one? I think I will. <laughs> oh, actually before I talk about um, my brushes. Let me go ahead and tell you about what I keep back here in these pockets. Up here I keep business cards and this little business card holder. Up here I keep a, a bunch of gems. Like a lot of beautiful little princess gems. I get these on chitchatthecloud.com. There's a couple wedges back there. I didn't even realize. Um, but yeah. This light doesn't work. It needs new batteries. I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> but it's cute. Um, I keep a pouch of my stencils in here. I need to clean those. Um, and a, a little bit more uh, gems in there. I could probably keep brushes in there, but I need something a little bit like sturdy, like this, just because I have so many brushes. Um, and there's just nothing in there. A couple, couple of my f colleagues uh, business cards in there, some um, q-tips in there, ooh a green, I didn't even realize that was there. <laughs> um, maybe I'll keep a couple of my extras up there too. And I, these were kind of like a gift from the woman that sold me this kit, but there's a couple of glitters and random things, actually this comes detached. Um, these aren't chopsticks, these are have face paint in them. I haven't figured out how to use them. But they're, they look like that. But I have a couple of those. I haven't figured out how to use those, gotta figure it out, that out. And I forgot to talk about uh, sponges, so let me just take, quickly mention the sponges. I keep them in this garment bag just like this so I can wash them easily after gigs, but these are my face painting sponges. I love to use these paint pal ones for uh, my split cakes. As you can see, they're stained. They're clean, but they're stained. Um, and I, this is my favorite sponge for sponging 
these rainbow cakes. They, um, I like to load them up on the edge and they really hold on to a lot of paint and blend them really beautifully. And I like that it's got a little bit of firmness, so that's really ideal. You can do that with these Wolf sponges too, but I, um, I prefer these for sponging on solid areas of color, so I just load them up just like that and uh, these are these deposit lots and lots of color. Um, I think they're my favorite for that. I used to use these Fantasy Worldwide sponges for, for doing my uh, split cakes, but I find that these are way too soft and they kind of get everywhere. <laughs> um, and they don't really, like, say you have a really fine they kind of turn into mush in a soft sponge like this. You need something a little bit firmer like this so those colors stay separated. This is a bolt brush. This is fine too. Um, it is softer. Um, I don't really kind of prefer this sponge, but it's, you know, fine. It's great for face painting too. Another essential sponge are these wicked petal sponges. I love to use the butt of these, the back, to um, load white for stenciling and I just kind of pat the stencils on like that. Um, they have the perfect amount of give. They're not too soft and not too uh, stiff. They're perfect for sponging on stencils. I have the from uh, Wicked Body Art, I think that they're called, and I also have some of the blue ones from Paint Pal, but I can't find them right now. But I have some of the blue ones too. Um, I also have a handful of these bolt ones in fancy shapes. I never try to get those fancy shapes to work though. It just, I don't know, it's not something I've ever really tried to pursue. Um, you're better off just kind of using a baby wipe and carving out the shape that you want. And I think another really f essential one, a uh, sponge to have are these stipple sponges, these special effects stipple sponges. These are fun, fun for making beards with, and also just different textures, like for you're making zombies, just adding like blood splatter and stuff like that. Those are fun for that. And yeah, those are, the, I think, uh, the most essential sponges. I have a couple daubers, but I never really use those. They're not really um, a big deal. The three, or the four main brush sponges I use are these guys right here. So, um, the these pa paint pal ones for the density, density. I've tried the paradise ones. These are way better. Um, and then the, these ones just for soft areas of color for, like, blocking out the eyes on a skull, or I love to use this brush for applying blush. It's so soft and just gets that, you can squish them into the perfect shape. And these are my favorite sponges to use for laying down large areas of color. And um, these are awesome for just getting to the crook of the eye for doing a tiger or something like that. And I also love to use these for um, sponging on stencils. Um, so. That is my sponges that I like the best. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned that I will sometimes keep old, like 30 pan of paradise pans. Um, I just keep this just to have a couple solid colors and as, as you can see, it's pretty well loved. It gets some use. Just cause I don't have any more space to keep this guy inside this kit. So I need a couple solids and I wanna introduce this to my, this kit a little bit too. These are, um, this used to be in the palette form, but this is the Wolf palette, uh, Wolf Brothers, well, like essentials palette, but I broke the actual palette, so I just keep it in this bag. Um, I brought this palette over onto the cruise with me when I did the cruise ship gig. Instead of throwing the palette away and just keeping the paints, because it was a pretty broken, bad palette. Um, and I needed to save space in my bag to fly back home with um, from Europe. So I want to introduce these guys into this kit somehow. Maybe I'll just stick them in there. Pretty talk about brushes. I'm not, I'm not lying this time. These brushes in uh, this folio from Heritage. The, I have two folios. One of them is from Mehran. And this one's from Heritage. Just bought, I just bought this one on eBay. I think it was about 30 bucks. I used to keep them 
my brushes in the back of my craft and go wedged between some foam, but I since have moved back into the folios just because oh it's nice to have that little protection on them anyway but it's essential to have them standing up and ready to go for you um, i have a the complete set of paradise by may run mark reed signature brush collection including this big one i love to use this one for it's essential for body painting is it for the most part but i'll use this for mermaids and just like large max mask designs um this is the marcella buscamante uh flat brush i recently have gotten into making flowers with the flat brushes and this is a really nice one for that. I haven't actually used many. I've had this flat brush in my collection for so long and I haven't really used it. This is Donna Dewberry flat brush and I haven't really used it in a real way. I realized that you can use these little flats to make flowers with. I'm going to play around with that a little bit more. This is a Dallium Tools flat brush from their SFX collection. I haven't used this one, but I just threw it in here just because it looks like a face painting brush to me. So I, I was curious to see um, if it would end up being a good face painting brush. This is the Chameleon flat brush. I, in the beginning when I first bought this, I was just like, how do people use this brush? So much give. <laughs> it just has a lot of give. I saw that Olga I forget what her last name is, but she's an amazing face painter. She's got a bajillion tutorials on face painting on, on YouTube. Olga uses this flat a lot, so I I gave it another chance. And yeah, if you're if you're someone that likes to have a real like a brush that has a ton of give, but I learned to use this brush, which is the this is the Protege 3 4 short shader. This one is super old and I've used this one exclusively with Global Iceland because, as you can see, the blue in the Global Iceland is such an evasive color. It do, It's going to stain any brush that you use it on, so I've, I use exclusively this brush with that split cake. Um, and I have a backup of it because I. Uh, it's the brush that taught me to understand uh, split cakes, and same with this one. I got, well, it's the same one. This is also a protege brush. Same one as this. It's a backup. Um, and I've just tried to not use this one as much just because I want them to last. The thickness of the bristles makes it so you can really get into that cake um, and load up the brush really easily. You, you don't have to spend like a full minute loading up your brush. <laughs> um, just because the, bro the, because the, shorters, the bristles are shorter, they absorb enough paint faster. Pretty essential for flats. I have the the smaller versions of those protege brushes next to them. I don't really use those a ton though. I love this face painting shop shader just to, for doing snakes. It's actually a pretty good in between between this brush from Paint Pal and the protege brushes. It's a little bit longer but it's nice and stubby and has a lot of nice spring. And this is a paintball brush. Uh, this is a really good one for just everyday split cake use um, and I love this American Painter one for roses. You need a good angled brush for roses and I find that this one's probably my favorite one. I haven't really found another angled brush for roses that I like quite as much as that one. Somebody recommended I get this bolt brush one of my colleagues, my friend Christine, I think, um, said that this is like the best brush for split cakes. I don't know if I like it. <laughs> uh, it seems a little bit too big and stubby. I'm sure I just need to figure out how she uses it and I love it. And this is a Donna Dewberry flat brush. This was one of the first ones that I really loved for split cakes. These are generally the brushes I'll take with me on the job. Oh, here's this is a Paradise Filbert brush, another uh, another Paint Pal Filbert. I don't use that one a ton. I actually use this one for spreading on um, pixie paints the most. And then a couple of these Flora brushes, a small one and big one. And you know, you obviously use those Flora brushes for leaves to make leaves with. So those are the flats that I will usually take. Oh, and this is a. Mark Reed brush that I like to use for buffing out, dry, like kind of dry brushing paints. Um, all really good brushes. Oh, and of course the fan. And I use the fan to make butterflies with. 
Uh, this is a Mark Reed brush, and I'll use this one to just kind of brush away glitter sometimes too. So I want to quickly talk about some of the backups I have. As you can tell, I have a lot of brushes, and I have even more brushes that I can't, I can't even keep them all. So I have um, a backup of the Paintball One Stroke. That one's a really nice one. Uh, this is the Paradise One Stroke. I think. I don't like to use this one as much, but I don't. I won't throw it away because it's an expensive fa face painting brush. It's a little bit too fat and weird. Pretty much every other flat brush I've mentioned is like better to use than this one. This is a tag flat brush. This one's really good too. It's pretty comparable to the Don Donna Dewberry one. Really like this one. I I bought it because I I saw Cameron Garrett use it in a tutorial on YouTube at one point. Um, it's a global flat brush. It's very similar to the Art Factory one. This one's really great for doing snakes with. Um, did I call, did I say Art Factory? I meant the face painting shop. This is another face painting shop brush. This is an angled one. I This one's weird to make roses with. I wouldn't use this to make roses with. I'm actually not sure what, what to use this for quite yet. I still have to play around with this brush a little bit more. Smaller angled brushes, I still haven't figured out the best way to use them for. I think there'd be, I haven't experimented much with doing outlines, like butterf butterfly outlines with angled brushes yet. So as you can see, they're, they're pretty like new looking and I've had these for a while and I just haven't used them very much, but I will definitely look into using these a little bit more and paint, paint pal flat brush. Haven't played around with this one very much. Now that I realize that it would it would be pretty fun to make flowers with these flat brushes, um, I'm gonna play around with that. A backup of the American Painter angled brush that I mentioned earlier. Um, that one's pretty essential. A large um, Silly Farm petal brush. I don't use this one a ton just because. I don't you like make large flowers like that very often, and it just, I don't know, it just doesn't come in handy. I, I've I've never really used this brush a ton. This is the a large big drop from PayPal, um, and for these brushes, these filberts, I wanna I wanna play around with making more flowers with these, but I primarily use these filberts for pack, spreading out um, pixie paints and stuff. Now let's go ahead and talk about. Uh, rounds. So I keep all my rounds kind of in order in my folio here. I start with the extra big rounds up here. These are like eights and tens. There's some sixes, some fives, a couple rows of four, like th yeah, four rows of fo four. These are all of these are number four rounds. Oh, no, these are number threes. These are number twos. These are number ones. A couple, uh, like a variety of really tiny ones um and my mark reed liner is in here too but there's a bunch of really tiny brushes in here a couple more filberts interesting double filbert right here that i sometimes use to make skull teeth that's the double filbert it's a very interesting looking brush um this is a marcella buscamante dagger brush i I'm just learning how to use this one. This is a super interesting brush, but yeah, I'm still just learning how to use that one and a handful of petal brushes. So I have the Silly Farm one, which I think might be, is my newest one, but it's quickly becoming my favorite. Um, it's just this, oh no, the Snazaru uh, petal brush. It's beautiful for making petals, but I also have the smaller one and the bigger one from Paint Pal, uh, the Paint Pal drop brushes. So this is gonna, as you can see, there's a lot of round brushes here. It's a lot to talk about. So I am gonna quickly breeze through my favorites. Um, this one is probably my number one favorite round brush and nobody uses this brush. This is Low Cornell 7000 and it comes with a black handle. I, it's like my, like I can't face paint without this brush. This is my number one favorite brush of all time. But I also, you know, everybody has the golden handle ones. These are excellent for face painters, um, kind of a staple. As you can see, mine don't even have the numbers on them anymore. They're so old. I actually, I lost a bunch of them too. I kept losing them at gigs and stuff. I have a bunch of the yellow ones. I have a couple of the Mark Reed rounds. Um, these were my favorite for a long time, but I've learned to love others. 
I these low Cornell 7000 C brushes were my favorites for a long time right before I found the 7000 um, these are really awesome they have the perfect amount of give and help you make super like tight awesome lines these brushes with the red handles these are the 720 ultra rounds from low Cornell's these make beautiful tiger stripes um, they've got that long point and I think a lot of the the new face painters coming into the world that are cre creating their own brush lines are basically making brushes that are just like this uh, for instance uh, I have two number fours from Marcella Buscamante but as you can see they're very different like this one is much like that one with the red stripe on them it comes to that point but this other one I think they're just different brushes, now that I think about it. Okay, I think this is just the regular Marcella Buscamante round, and this is the Ultra Point, but they're both number fours. This one makes beautiful, like, tiger stripes and very whimsical, uh, flowing designs, and but they're kind of tricky to learn how to use. They don't maintain their point unless you hold them the perfect way. You have to paint with the tip of the brush to get that beautiful uh, point. If you go press too hard, it's going to fan out it's not going to be as pretty. If you make too sharp of a movement, it will split and the flow of the shape of your line is going to be all jagged and not cute. So um, there's definitely a learning curve to using brushes like these. This one too. I think these brushes are basically the same. A, a very interesting brushes to learn how to use to improve your line work handful of bolt brushes here all of my bolt rounds do this stuff I don't know if you can see but it's all frayed around the ferrule and I don't know I just don't like the bolt brushes I don't like how big the handles are they don't fit into my brush cleaner container thing and they I don't know they used to be orange like this and they faded to this crazy color over the years and I've had the ferrule come off on a bunch of them too I just, I don't know, I don't like the bolt rounds. They're just, I think they're pretty poor quality. I'm not a fan. The paint bell brushes are fine. I actually like the little ones the best. I love this one for doing the number one paint bell round to, for doing starbursts. I think that's a beautiful brush to do starbursts with. And I have a couple of super fine little detail brushes here. So these ones with the clear handles are both paradise ones. And I've got like a big liner from Mark Reed. I have to learn how to use this because I've seen Mark Reed himself paint with this and he makes such beautiful lines with this, but I haven't figured out how to do that myself yet. So I really need to mess around with this. This is a wolf brush, a tiny detailer. I think that one came with the uh, FX palette. An artist's loft brush that came with a kit that I bought. And this is like a super fine, low kernel liner brush. So yeah, I basically covered um, all my favorite brushes in here. Let me know if there's anything you want me to go a little bit more in depth about. Let me just briefly show you my backups. So here are all my round backups of all my... A friend of mine gifted me this brush very recently. This is a La Corniel Flora round. Um, a friend of mine gifted this to me. This is a number six, and I haven't figured out how to use it yet. She says it'll be great for tiger stripes. I have to mess around with that a little bit more. Um, I have a couple of Mark Reeds in here. I have two num of the number fours and one of the number sixes. As you can see, there's quite a few bolt brushes here. So yeah, I've got four of the bolt brushes here. I just don't reach for these. As you can see, a bunch of these have, are frayed out. The liner ones are looking okay. The, the firm liners last a little bit better, but the, the other ones fray like crazy. Look, the ferrules coming off on this one. Got a backup of the, of one of the petal drop from Paint Pal brushes here. And a couple extra of the rounds, just, just those two from Paint Pal. Couple backups of the low Cornells here. One. Oh, this is a Royal Lion Lickle brush. Crazy. That's kind of weird. I didn't even realize I had one. Um, but that's a Royal brush. Uh, and I've got a Petal Maker from Chameleon. This one is a really weird to use. I haven't 
Um, it's not one of my favorites. Out of all my petal brushes, this one's probably my least favorite. But that is all my brushes, and that is my entire kit. So I hope you guys really liked watching this video. If you have any questions about my face painting career, or the products or the brushes. I, I really ended up talking a lot about the brushes just because when I first was building my face painting kit, like in a real way, when I wanted, wanted to buy actual face painting brushes for the purpose of face painting rather than getting those crappy brushes from Michaels that would just needed needed to be replaced all the time because they were losing their points i wanted to invest in good brushes that were going to last i did a lot of research in the beginning to figure out like how what brushes are used for what and what are the best ones and which ones should i spend my money on i spent a lot of time um, researching them and and as i was making money from face painting i would put it back into my kit and try out more and more products and i've kind of I feel like I've tried a lot, a lot of brushes, a lot of face paints, and a lot of um, different products, so I have a pretty good knowledge of what is cool and what is good, and I think, you know, a lot of people will just be like, oh, just get Wolf Black and White, those are the best for line work, and get, you know, all tag. But yeah, I really do believe that there's like a best version of every product, in at least in the face painting world. Um, I've done enough experimenting that I think I can make a lot of really good recommendations for anybody that's building their kit. So, if you guys have any questions about my kit, if you want me to go into depth about anything, just leave uh, your questions down below in the comments, your requests for things you'd like me to go more in depth about. So thanks again for hanging out with me again today, guys, and watching this video, and give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe if you want to see some more, and I hope to hang out with you again soon next time. Thanks again, guys. Bye.